Hi, my name is Pete Hahn, and thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hahn-tech.com for the full library of video tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Hi, welcome to today's video. This video, like many others I've done previously, is based upon input I received from one of our viewers. This viewer was asking about implied volatility and historical volatility being plotted together in the same subgraph. The viewer was having difficulty trying to get them combined into one subgraph, and it reminded me that I had already done this. There was a class that I took from one of the professional traders, I think it was John Carter, and he was teaching on this topic and how to compare historical versus implied volatility. If you look him up, I'm sure that he's got material on that and he can explain this. I myself am not a professional trader and I'm not trying to tell you this is a indicator that you can use to make buy or sell decisions. Nothing in this video should be construed to be a, a advertisement to buy or sell any financial instrument or tell you how to manage your trading decisions. With that out of the way, you can see in the bottom of the chart I've got two lines plotted in the subgraph. The yellow line is implied volatility. The pink line is historical volatility. There are a couple of text boxes, chart labels they would call them, in the upper left. You've got a high low for the week and a high low for the month. What do those values mean? Well the high low week is showing 6.7. That's 6.7 percent for the last rolling five days. That's uh, you know one week in the markets is five days of trading. So that's what we've got there. Now a high low for the month is based upon rolling 21 days. And this is showing that in the past rolling 21 days there's been a 30.4 percent move in the price. So these chart labels here colored red in the upper left are actually tracking the price movement of the stock. And these lines down in the bottom are actually tracing the historical and implied volatility. Now where does implied volatility come from? Well that comes from the options. And a more clear description of implied volatility is beyond the topic of this video. Implied volatility comes from the options. And it is an expectation, if you will, given the market's push and pull of prices of options, giving you an indication of where the market is expecting the stock to go. And it's really not a directional indicator as much as it is, well, it's volatility. And volatility is what's the variance between the high and the low. So historical volatility is simply a measure, of, it's the same thing except it's measuring actual volatility. So you can see, I'll zoom in here in the bottom, I'll zoom in a little bit so that you can see this up close. And when you have a bunch of tight range bars all grouped together, historical volatility is low. You can see it down here, down around 10-12%. While the yellow line, the implied volatility, is going up. Well, notice what's happening here. You've got an earnings that reported here in April of 2014. And as the earnings approached, the implied volatility was rising. This is what happens in the options market. As the earnings is approaching, many stocks, their implied volatility will go up. And it doesn't mean that the stock's going to go up or down. What it means is they're expecting the stock to make a big move one direction or the other. You can see that after the earnings is released, there is a big move in the stock, and you can see that historical volatility spikes. And what happens to implied volatility? Well, it begins to decline over time. It's just a matter of a comparison between the market's expectation of price movement and a measure of actual historical price movement. Okay, that's what you've got there. Well, this indicator that I've built is ready to go. I'm going to link it in the description of the video. Stick around though because I'm also going to show you how you can take this indicator and apply it in a scan. I've got three different types of scans that you can apply and I'll show you how to put that into a scan and how to run the scans and that's coming up. So stick around. Okay, we're going to take this indicator now and we're going to copy and paste the code into a scan and we'll run the scan and see what results we get. We're going to click on studies and edit studies 
and then we're going to go to the indicator which is called implied historical volatility and we'll click on the script icon to open up the code and we want to click and drag to select everything but the top two lines so we click and drag all the way to the bottom and then we can right click and select copy now we can click cancel here because we don't need to do anything and we'll click cancel here and then we'll go to the scan tab on your thinkorswim platform now i've got one loaded in here already and i'll just clear those out i will leave the price filter and i'll leave the volume filter and we'll add a study filter and we'll click on the study selection and click on custom and that will open up a code editor. Now we want to go over to the Think Script Editor, the second tab. We want to erase any lines of code that are already there. We'll get rid of those. And we can right click and select paste. Now we're pretty close to getting this done now and ready for a scan. So pay close attention. These steps are very important. You see all this text in yellow down at the bottom? That's where the scan is done. All right. So let me scroll up a little bit further here and you can see that there's a little section right here. You see this section right here in yellow? To use in scan mode, place a pound sign in front of these two plot statements. That's referring to these two statements here. So the first thing you need to do is put a pound sign in front of this. One here and one here. That effectively turns off the statements that were plotting those two lines on the chart. We don't need those for the scan and they will probably interfere with the scan in some way. Now we've got some comments here. We've got uh, one comment here that says use one of these three plot statements in scan mode. After commenting out the two plot statements above, select one of the three below and remove the pound symbol from in front of the plot statement. Alright, pretty simple. Now I've got three plot statements. You can see one here, one here, and one here. Those are your three different types of scans. And I've got a description for each listed above. So let's see, the first one says, use this to find stocks where implied volatility has reached two times historical volatility. The second one says, use this to find stocks where implied volatility has crossed above historical volatility. And finally, the third one says, use this to find stocks where implied volatility has crossed below historical volatility. So those are the three types of scans that you can run with this code. And I'll show you now how to unmark one of these as a comment and turn it on effectively, and then run the scan and we'll look at the results. All right, so stay tuned. Okay, I'll unmark the first plot statement, which is the one that finds stocks where implied volatility has reached two times historical volatility. And if we scroll a little further up to the top here in the input section, you'll see that there's a multiplier for that volatility spread multiplier. And it's set at 2.0, which is two times. And uh, I'll show you a little bit later. Stick around. I'll show you what that looks like on the uh, chart. We'll go back to the chart after we get done with these scans. And I'll show you what this particular scan looks like on a chart. It develops these particularly interesting signals that occur. It looks like just before big events are going to take place. Like, for instance, earnings, big one. Or anytime the market is expecting, oh, uh, judgment from... Uh, some some lawsuit or maybe uh, maybe the big pharmas when they're expecting uh, the results of some study to come out uh, you might find uh, that this signal is, is picking up those kind of situations so um, go ahead and click OK here and then we'll hit scan alright and we pick up three different stocks so let's see we'll take a look at one of these um, we got some good volume here on this one. Let's look at that one. Let's look at KS, see what the chart looks like there. Okay, and you can see what it's picking up is this huge spike here. Uh, the implied volatility is much more than two times. You can see that the historical volatility is at 4168, so t double that would be at about 83. So uh, you can see that implied volatility is at 86. So that's what that scan picked up. 
and it's designed to pick up these little situations here where you have a big spike in implied volatility meaning that the market makers in the market as a whole thinks that there's a big move coming up uh, so that gives you kind of a heads up you know I don't know what you do with that I'm not a professional trader I'm sure someone out there is gonna look at that and have some great ideas and do some great stuff with that so let's go ahead and go back to the scan and I'll show you the other two scans that you can run We'll click the edit button and scroll down to the bottom. We'll turn off the plot scan for the one we just ran. And then we'll turn on the second one, which is a crossover of implied volatility above historical volatility. We'll click OK and we'll press the scan button. You can see we've got a lot of results on that one. One that jumps out at me here is BAC. Let's go back to the chart and check that out. bring up a chart of BAC and you can see what occurred here I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that in more detail it is a crossover from below see implied volatility was below the historical volatility and it is crossed above but you can see it's been zigzagging for some time here that's what the skin is picking up so let's go back and look at the scan and I'll show you how to run the third and final scan that's available with this code. So we'll click on the edit button, scroll down to the bottom, we'll turn off the second plot and turn on the third plot. Alright, now that's active. We'll click OK and we'll press scan. Now we get some results here and let's see if anything jumps out at me. That one might be something to look at. Um, yeah, let's look at a HCP. Okay, so HCP, and we'll zoom in on this a little bit closer. You can see this is a case where the implied volatility was above the historical volatility, but has now crossed below historical volatility. So the bottom two scans on this code are meant to find the implied volatility versus historical volatility crossovers. And the first one that I showed you is meant to find those places where the implied volatility is much higher, in fact, twice as high as historical volatility. So that's the indicator. That's how you run it into a scan. Hope this is helpful for you guys. I hope that you can put it to use. Thanks for the viewer who posted that question. It reminded me that I had this code laying around and it was uh, just had to blow the dust off it here a little bit and get it ready for... Uh, for presentation. So thanks for watching everybody. Take care. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hon-tech.com for the full library of tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Thanks and take care.